people who are the, the traders in this case telling us about why fuel prices lead to a direct increase in the cost of food items and other things on the market. But now that the prices have come down significantly, we don't see a corresponding reduction in the prices of goods. Why, why is that? Yeah, uh, uh, good morning once again to your uh, cherished uh, viewers, uh, and thank you for having me. Yes, uh, like you rightly said, uh, we have seen uh, some uh, decrease of fuel uh, in the last, uh, I think, two or three uh, price uh, windows. And uh, as we are saying, uh, we expect uh, a corresponding uh, decrease in uh, goods and services, but uh, we still find out that uh, goods and services are still uh, on the high side. And uh, uh, I must say that uh, fuel uh, is one of the variables that uh, we consider when it comes to pricing of, of goods uh, and, and services. But there are many other you know, factors that also uh, contribute to uh, pricing. And I must say, fuel uh, uh, is just one aspect of it. Uh, in terms of goods that we purchase on the market, we have those that are foreign dominated and then those that are also produced locally. So I, I want to deal with uh, the ones that are produced locally. Uh, and we expect prices to go down, but prices are still uh, on the higher side uh, before I deal with uh, the imported one also. Uh, we should all know that uh, when we talk of locally produced goods, let's deal with those that are even manufactured uh, in this country. Uh, and, and, and I'm not happy, uh, my friend from AGI, it's, it's not here. Otherwise, he would have been able to even contributed more to uh, this discussion. If you talk of uh, local manufacturing goods, we are all aware that cost of utilities are very high in this country. And so, therefore, uh, those people in the manufacturing sector always complain. What do we see in terms of uh, borrowing from the banks cost of borrowing is on the higher side just about two weeks ago policy rate was increased by 150 basis it used to be 28 percent and now it's 29.5 percent when it was 28 percent lending rate at the bank was close to 40 percent and now that it has gone up to 29.5%, you can imagine that definitely it is going to go up. So therefore, if you are producing in this country, it is very, very expensive. And some of uh, the manufacturing companies have even ended up because they cannot break even. So that also accounts for the high prices that we are seeing at the markets. Now, if we talk about the local produce, we should know that gone are the days that we use hoe and cutlass in doing farming. Now, farming is being done mechanically. We are doing mechanized farming. And all the inputs that goes into this mechanized farming are imported. They are not manufactured locally. Let's talk about redesigns. Let's talk about fertilizers. Let's talk about uh, agrochemicals. All these products are being imported. And when you import these products, import duties before you clear them. All these add to the cost and so therefore if foodstuffs are produced from the hinterland we must all know that these implements that they use are all implements that were bro brought from outside 
and have paid duties on it. And so therefore, it adds to the cost of the farming. And therefore, when the goods are transported from the hinterlands to the cities, to the cities, definitely you should know that prices will be a little bit up, irrespective of the fact that petrol prices, you know, has gone down because it's just one of the variables in the determination of prices. But consistently, yes. the, the fuel prices have gone down because I've heard traders say, yes, it costs us a lot to bring food from um, further away into the city. But if, if we see increases in the prices, when fuel prices increase and your people make the case that these prices, these, these price hikes are because of the hikes in fuel prices, why shouldn't we expect a, a corresponding decrease when the fuel prices also decrease, decrease? Because that's the case that your people make when we go to the market to buy food. Well, uh, it is true that uh, some, of, some of our people do make, you know, that case that uh, prices, you know, uh, goes up as a result of the fuel uh, increment. And like uh, you said, you rightly said, of the last two or three pricing windows, it has gone down. At least we, we, we expect, you know, some sort of uh, uh, dec uh, decrease in, 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 in the, in the full stops that uh, uh, we sell. But you and I will also agree with me that even the statisticians, when they are coming out with the uh, food inflation, the prices that determine the food inflation are always up irrespective of the fact that petrol prices have gone down so that is the reason why i said that in the determination of the prices petrol prices is just one of the variables but the factors that are enumer enumerated comes into the determination of the prices not to the petrol alone petrol is just one aspect of it and you cannot say that because petrol prices has gone down for the last two prices windows therefore my prices has to be reduced drastically. Well, you can, you know, uh, choose to adjust the prices a bit, but to go down drastically, it will be a little bit of a, a problem. Ms. Ozeni, you've listened to your good friend, Mr. Boateng, making the case that it's just one thing. Fuel is just the one item on the list of 10, 20, 30 items on the list of variables that go into pricing uh, goods or services. Does it seem to the consumer, on the consumer side, that this is a fair argument? It is not a fair argument. Uh, once again, let me say good morning and happy Easter to our viewers. Uh, it's not a fair assess assessment because, as we all know, the moment fuel goes up, instantly their prices go up. They don't say that, oh, we have the goods already. And the argument will be, oh, next time when we go to bring it, we will pay more. And that argument doesn't add up. Because once it's going down, you will tell me that, oh, you've paid a high price before. But once it goes up, you tell me that I shall allow you to increase it immediately. Which is not fair. You see, in business, they, they, they have something called fair trading and in this country consumers are not getting fair trade in a sense that yes we agree you are a businessman you are in there to make profit but when you see in 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 in, in business or in market they have the buyer's market and the seller's market when is the seller's market they are happy but when it becomes the buyer's market they don't want to give and that is why i have a problem it's, it's never done in any jurisdiction apart from here or maybe Africa. This is why I see when things go up, which you all know that things have gone up. So if you tell me you are going to increase, I don't have a problem. But when it's descending, I want to see you also descending with your prices. Even if the variables, the other factors that he mentioned, like which the variable, they like all, cost of borrowing, yeah, I understand like that. But, but, the other yeah, but we've been not just because there, there's mechanizing farming in Ghana. The excuse has always been there, not because some machine has been used to plow. Why is it that onions and things coming from Burkina Faso is cheaper than Ghana? Don't they also have machines there? But onions, 
Burkina Faso coming to Ghana is cheaper. Plantain coming from Africa is cheaper. I would say that is this the Ghanaian thing about maximizing the opportunities that they have as businesses? And you can't fault them because they are in to make profit. Look, you remember, may you, you are a lot younger, but they used to have Nigerians who were doing this petty trading. Okay, we call them Boya Boya for. Okay, they, their profit was on a small percentage because they looked in volumes. The Ghanaian businessman don't care about volumes anymore. He wants instant profit. The Ghanaian, I mean, we, we all travel. I do business. My family are in business. My wife is a businesswoman. My, I mean, I grew up in Okanshi. My mother, my everybody is a, is a business at the park pharmacy. It's my niece. I get to my point. So I understand their business. But the Ghanaian businessman, his profit margins are too huge. Look, the same way you are talking about other things that goes into the food basket. I agree with you. But I don't have the same things going in my pocket in terms of pay or salary. So how do I even afford? And I've told them several times that it will get to a point if we cannot buy They'll be stuck with their goods because it is buying and selling. If the buyer cannot buy anymore, the selling will not go on. And this is what they should understand. Some of them, okay, I mean, when they tell you cost of things that they have in their shops, and you also know how much it costs somewhere, and you, you're okay, fine, let's add this everything, and you look at the profit margin on it. It's a profit margin that worries me. It's too much. Look, in business, ask, by, um, um, ask any school of business or whatever that profits, if you make anywhere between 15 to 25%, you've made plenty of profit in terms of proper business. In Ghana, they make 300%. <laughs> That's what it, I mean, if you like, open the lines and then people, and people sure? tell you. People will tell you. I, sure? I, I am from a business family. Okay, my, my family is still in business. I always argue with my wife on this, on this same argument. And I say, it is not fair. Okay, the moment, and this is the thing, it is instant though. They don't even give us the same room when the things are going, going up. That, oh, I have the goods in the store. So let me sell the goods that I already have. And then when I go and bring the new stuff, they will tell you because I will change the dollar at the higher rate. I don't care what you have in your shop. You bought it at a lesser rate. Same way when the thing comes, uh, goes up. You, you can't tell me that I should allow you to hold on until. No. That's not fair business. And they know. And we will allow them to do it. And Ghanaians don't also don't even know how to boycott. In other jurisdictions, they will boycott businesses. Because the business, your main focus or your main reason why you are surviving is because of your customer. There's a shop in America called Nostrums. Nostrum says he likes an informed customer. Either that customer will come today, tomorrow until the end of his life. Ghana, they don't care. I didn't ask you to come to my shop. That is the attitude. And it is not fair. Make profit, make reasonable profit. And that is the problem. Look, the dollar, he's talking about the dollar to his car, I mean down. Right? Isn't the dollar now almost about 11 CDs now? It went up to, four, it went even to 17 or so. 15. It, about 17. About 17. The dollar is now down to 11. Petrol went to almost uh, some high price. It's now down to 11. I agree. Some of the taxes that they pay is very high. That one is government. We need to. I've told them that let's come together. Let's plead with government that look, if you let me pay this all these high taxes, it would affect the end user. Who's the consumer? 
Because true, he is not Santa Claus. He's not going to pay taxes and give it to me for free. He has to collect the taxes back. But the question I'm asking is, where much profit, the margin of profit, is where the issue is. Let's bring our viewers into the conversation. Our WhatsApp number zero five 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 six one zero three four. Are you a business person? Are you a consumer? What are your concerns when it comes to pricing? Reach out to us, Mr. Capito and uh, Mr. Boating are here, Vice President of Guta and the CEO of the Consumer Protection Agency, to help us understand some of the issues that you may be facing. Mr. Boating, you've, you've heard your good friend here make the point. And we've seen this a lot on the market, haven't we? That when you go into a typical Ghanaian shop, you're likely to see the profit margins or the prices of goods at much higher uh, rates than you go into your typical perhaps a nigerian shop i've experienced it personally so i know what he's talking about you go to circle you want to buy something you're more likely to get a, a better beat down price from our friends from nigeria than you are likely to get from your friends who are Ghanaians. and i know that you have this whole you know space reserved for Ghanaian traders and some some people cannot get into that space and if they are foreigners but you understand some of those concerns that if i can get something for cheaper from a Nigerian or from anywhere else, if I have that choice, I would, I would go to that person. So why are the profit margins such a, such a problem for, for you? If you can make, like um, Kofi saying, uh, you're good uh, yes, to go. Uh, why 300, if that's true? Yes. Uh, I cannot dispute the fact that some of our people do make a outrageous profit. That one is there. But for somebody to make a 300% profit, as uh, Mr. Capito said, that one is not true. The market that we are in currently is very competitive market. And you should know that you have borrowed a facility from the bank. And so if you don't sell quickly if you say you want to make much much profit how will you be able to service your facility and then make a good turnover that one is not, it's not, it's not true the market that we are in is very 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 competitive so you cannot just you know be just increasing your prices just like that you always compare us to the nigerians that one it's an undeniable fact that some of the Nigerians sell, you know, a bit cheaper. Even Togo, Abiga, than, yes, Faso. yes, than ours. But we should be asking ourselves, what is the policy rate of Nigeria? In September last year, that our policy rate was about 20, 22, thereabouts. Nigeria policy rate was about 14%. Was about 14 percent you're watching us live on gtv breakfast um what's up number zero five 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 six one zero three four that's a a quick technical uh, break there and we will continue with the conversation mr clement Boating and the ceo of the consumer protection agency are helping us understand why the prices of goods and services are not affected when the fuel prices decrease and mr Boating is making a strong case for his people uh from the ghana union of traders association guta and of course consumer protection um, ceo is also fighting for some of the concerns of the consumers to be heard and we've invited you to join the conversation on our whatsapp number with your own experiences mr Boating, you were making the point yes. about what the policy rate in nigeria is I, yes and yes comparing that to comparing ghana. That, that to ghana currently we are all aware that VAT has been increased from 12.5% to 15%. If you add the other uh, tax, uh, NHIL 2.5, Get Fund 2.5, COVID levy 1%, VAT is almost about 22%. What is the VAT in Nigeria? What is the VAT rate in, 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 in Togo? What is the VAT rate in Ivory Coast? Now, all these Nigerians 
that you are talking about channel their goods through the eastern corridor and by going through the eastern corridor they don't pay the necessary duties that they are supposed to pay i have duty paper here i will show it to you but when goods enter if, the country through the any of the borders yes. depending on what kind of goods they are they are expected to pay certain they are tariffs. they are expected to pay certain tariffs but they always don't pay the the, the, the right tariffs that they are supposed to pay so time and On time what again basis would you make that claim because i am making the, that claims because the, i know what i'm talking about and the GRE officials will yes. not be here to respond I'm, I'm, to, I'm, I'm, to yes i know what i'm talking about if you go to the customs office at the airport you will see the number of trucks that they have impounded simply because they didn't pay the right duties that they are supposed to pay. All the goods will be brought down, checked one by one, for them to make sure that they pay the necessary duties and taxes before the goods are released to them. So therefore, if they bring the goods out, they can therefore sell at any price that they want, irrespective of the, 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 the fact that they didn't pay uh, the right duties. So uh, I am, I am, I am. But I'm, is it fair to assume that all Nigerian businesses, or the majority of them, from what you are inferring, do not pay the right taxes, and that's why their goods are cheaper on the market? Could it, could it be the Ghanaian trader is just making excuses, and the, no, uh, the consumer no, is the one bearing the brunt no, of it? No, no, the Ghanaian trader is not making excuses. Look, there was a time that we embarked on this uh, foreigners in retail. A trade issue we went to a shop in in Kumase and you'll be amazed to see that all the goods that are in the shop when the GRA asks the Nigerian to produce custom duty papers on all the items he wasn't able to produce any paper and for the period for over five ten years that he has been in business in Ghana here he's not paying VAT He's not paying domestic tasks. He's not paying anything. They are just doing the business. And when you go there to buy, for them to even issue a receipt to you becomes a problem. Well, I, f I find that quite problematic. And I wouldn't want to box everyone in the same... You know, Thelma, it's, it, is, it, is, it is very, very interesting, this assertion being made by Mr. Wawati. Uh, that means our systems are not working. Okay, assistant, I'm talking about people who are supposed to man uh, uh, the gatekeepers are asleep. Yes, it's true that maybe some lending rate or borrowing interest somewhere will be cheaper because they've made it so for businesses to grow. That one I can agree with them. I'm talking about when you, even this Ghanaian businesses, goes to a non Ghanaian shop and buy this water and the person sells to them one city they will come and sell it to five cities have you seen the boys on the streets who go to some big shops buy those items okay have you seen their profit margins on it it's the Ghanaian attitude and i mean i'm, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and like i said i'm I, i'm from a business family Go to Okashi. We don't want to do quick turnarounds. They come, the goods look just like the way we've been doing property renting in Ghana. The man says, I want a thousand dollars or equal to a thousand dollars a month. Somebody comes, I'll give you eight hundred. He says, I won't take it. The house will sit there for the next five years. If you are taking the eight uh, uh, hundred times five is forty thousand dollars. But you will let the house sit. It's the Ghanaian attitude. So if it's the Ghanaian attitude, then you put no, you don't put the blame on, no, no, on, on just, traders no, but, alone. But hold on. Let me let me let me let me make my the question is your excuses that you give the consumers is where I have a problem. Where it is an unfair way of doing business. When it goes up instantly, which is fair. When it's coming down, you tell me you will not reduce it. Why? Because in three months from now, if you decide to go and buy the goods again, the dollar rate would have gone up. So you will not reduce it. Is it fair?
But, Mr. Capito, he made a very, you know, I want us to address sure. this issue, that some people evade taxes. And so they go behind the systems, the laid down networks. Is it, is it, is it only non Ghanaians? So that, I'm asking, so that I'm asking they, the question. They are able to I'm offer him the question. No, but part. you are confirmed. Is it, is it, no, hold on, hold on. It's not that we, we, are, we are on the market. Is it the only, if not, GI will not be going around. Is it only the non Ghanaians? Let's, let's, let's. But let's. those are the people that you are comparing no, no, us I'm, with. No, no, yes. I'm, I'm just telling you that their mentality, because as a kid, Call at a store. My mother would tell me, Call at a store. Because Mami Alata, her margin is small. And this Ewa, her margin is huge. Because and this Ewa feels as a mega, a mega name. I'm in my country. I'm entitled. That is the problem. We need to change our mentality of doing business in Ghana. I agree. You incur some serious. Cost that is not necessary. Yes. I agree with you. Yes. I don't even understand why we are even being made to pay COVID test, uh, 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 COVID tax. It doesn't make any yes. sense to me. Where is COVID? I don't want to. I don't. I don't know. Maybe in, in Nigeria are they paying it? In Togo are they paying it? Paying. You know, there are certain things that does not make any sense to me. You go and buy this water from abroad. You get to Accra. They say pay ECOWAS levy. I think the water is making it made in ECOWAS. Meanwhile, ECOWAS is not doing the same thing. See, this is thing that I agree with you. Let's see how we can make it a way that maybe government needs to retune or redirect and see where they are going to collect taxes and revenue. Where there are some huge loops or loopholes that government doesn't want to attack, which is property rate. I don't understand why government cannot be serious. Well, efforts are, have been which have effort? been rolled out to, which to make payments easier. So we which have effort? some of the officials at the table, all uh, meant to make it easier for people to which? pay their property rates, even ahead of their property Can being, I tell you what? being valued I, I, that, or being valued. Listen, listen. My my assembly sends people around. They come to my house with a plain sheet of paper. I, I said the girls. Well, you are not supposed to do that. No, no, let me explain. No, 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 no. no. Officially, come with the assembly's stamp and let it be an official document. We are, we, we are jokers in this country because other, other jurisdictions, you know, every year it is your mandate to pay your property tax. So you pay. Government needs to redirect and stop this uh, pot. Maybe that's the reason why they are also doing what they are doing. Because government is somehow lazy. They find the low-hanging fruit, the pot. Because if you don't pay, your goods, goods will not come will out. Come out yeah. So that is where everything is being increased. You see how quickly you are, yes. you know, agreeing yeah, with what yeah, 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 but like he knows agree. that. But, he knows but that. when no. it comes to the issue of prices, <laughs> prices it doesn't work. Yes. Is so, he, so, he, so, Mr. Watson, uh, negotiate for better terms with government. <laughs> if the taxes are crippling as you're saying they are, how, how about that? Have you made those we, efforts? We, 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 see, we have met government several times on uh, this cost of doing business. business. Yes. For government to try as much as possible to cut down cost of doing business and uh, regarding the shipping lines they are also in this country milking the importers look two years ago uh, there was a fact-finding tour uh, within the ECOWAS region you know to also look at how the cost of doing business is especially regarding the shipping lines and when we came we all saw that if you if 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 you take the total clearing charges at the port if you take the percentage that the shipping lines are charging ghana alone shipping lines are charging almost seven percent of the total clearing charges but togo is less than one percent togo is 0.98 percent Côte d'Ivoire was about three percent uh dakar was about four percent ghana was almost 
7%. So, we have told the regulators, that's the Ghana Shippers Authority, to try as much as possible and amend its laws because we have seen some loopholes in their laws which doesn't allow them you know to buy it but if you go to other jurisdictions it is not like that the same shipping lines or vessels that comes here are the same vessels that also plies this route but why is it that when it comes to ghana ghana's shipping line charges is higher than all the countries within the sub-region so we have asked shippers authority to look at it and i think they are doing something on it now let's talk about quite recently you all know that there was there has been a reversal of the benchmark values benchmark values when it was in place you know was helping every consumer in this country i know my friend will, 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 will not agree with me in that direction but it was true yes it was true because benchmark brought prices down had it not been benchmark which was given in 2019 prices would have been much 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 more higher but when the benchmark came it brought prices down so when government decided to reverse benchmark as a result of some pressures which were coming from somewhere we told government that it is not right for government to reverse benchmark government didn't listen and government has taken off benchmark uh, uh, mr Boasing, when, it, when when it comes to holding others to their word when it comes to putting the blame on the taxes and the the, the policies and you're you're quick to say oh government should have done this and government should. yes but when it came to the profit margins that mr capito raised you didn't say anything no i said i've seen i've seen traders hmm. who have goods in their shop yes who walk consumers out they walk customers mm -hmm. literally out of mm -hmm. the shop so they can change the prices on the goods in the shop whilst they are there because Maybe. they've heard someone has called that the dollar rate has gone up i've i've witnessed it personally i'll go over to the screen and read a few messages oh, but yes, well, how do you people. respond to some of these things you are in the shop the goods are already there yeah. why do you get a call and then you decide that okay i was selling this for one ghana city now i'm going to sell it for for two ghana cities just because it's a, you've already bought it. I'm buying it. Why, why maybe, you, maybe, why maybe, you address that? maybe one out of you know hundred people a hundred out of will 100. do that. Are you sure? I'm out telling of, you, one out of hundred. One out of hundred will do people that. People have felt that personally, you know. One out of hundred will do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, and maybe that thing was done at the time that you know the uh, uh, our city was 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 going down. It was very recent. It was very recent. It was very recent. And I'm, I'm glad that you're making a point on Mr. Capito. You should do the same. We are having a conversation with Mr. Clement Boating, who is Vice President of Guta, and Mr. Kofi Ousuhene, CEO of the Consumer Protection Agency, on prices and why the reduction in fuel prices are not being reflected in the goods, the prices of goods and services that we, we, we consume. And we've invited you to join the conversation on our WhatsApp, 55 These are your thoughts and not the thoughts of GBC. I'll read some of them aloud. So, gentlemen, you can take notes and then perhaps we'll have time to address a few of them before we wrap up in just a few minutes. So here's a long one about the policy rates to deal to do with the profits Ghanaian traders want to achieve i'm sorry is mr Martin, so? but you is are wrong so? nigerian so? traders know the sense <laughs> of business know what he's talking about. on the other <laughs> hand Ghanaians, not really example is here i was coming from home and i i was stopped by a lady selling mangoes i wanted to buy for 20 cities she said she wouldn't sell because she she only have them she would sell them for 40 i think and i asked her if she, uh, she can't, can't divide, divide the 40, 40 into two, and she, and totally, she totally refuses. refuses. <laughs> also coming to rent, my landlord refused to give me a house for $500 a month for a year because she wanted two years, but it's been a year and the house is still empty. <laughs> and Nigerian will never do that. <laughs> Benchmark didn't bring anything oh, he lied. down. So he they're, lied. Coming, they're still coming <laughs> for you on the screen. The rate at which prices are increasing in the store never ceases to amaze me. The milk I used to buy at the rate of 34 cities, I bought it two weeks ago for 59 cities. This week it's selling for 75 cities despite decrease in four prices and dollar rates. At least fear God. It's telling on all of us. Good morning from Abo Kobe. They, are, they have more examples. Ordinary pack of carrots. 13 cities, now 24 cities. Prices are killing us. Um, good morning, Mr. Hmm. 
Capito, Capito, I think, is really making a point there, and he's more than 100% correct. <laughs> what he's saying is a fact. Alaji joins from Medina Estate. If food prices can't be reduced, I call on the Minister of Agriculture to revisit sales at the Ministry to public servants because under PNDC government, we did the same. Question to you, um, Vice President. Um, is there any meeting of knowledge sharing between your group and the Nigerian Chinese traders for new ideas of doing business? So they could tell you what the trick is, is, my, is, is what I'm guessing. What Capito is saying is true. The profit margins of Ghanaian businesses are high. Even those who sell perishable goods like avocado and banana, they prefer throwing them away than selling them at the lower price when they are getting rotten. Listen, whoever you are that says avocado <laughs> because this is so true this it's is true, so true, true. what mr true. Usi is saying is very true you'll be surprised that some pharmacies are making about 300 percent profit on drugs imported goods at kumas is cheaper than those in accra yeah. meanwhile the yeah, port is in accra yes so some very very <laughs> strong sentiments coming from the screen there good morning um please tell the man to your left uh, he should be placed the, the price of the commodity at the ministry is he on point? Don't understand what you are trying to say, you are, but try and uh, put your thoughts together again and let's read it. It is we individuals and the behavior of, of increasing prices. People have taken advantage of the economic hardship to make life easier for themselves. When things are very difficult, others took advantage by increasing prices of their various goods. I know someone who bought an item which cost 20 Ghana cities, but is selling it at 70 Ghana cities. When uh, she said things are very high. Hmm. Asemo, First Lady Titi, God save our country, Kweku Roberts from Awudome Estates. I'm going to go straight to the top. Now, welcome from Easter. Kofi, you're on point. Guta should be fair to we, the consumers, by telling us that fuel price is only one variable in pricing. Guta has shot itself in the foot. Please, let's all change our attitudes and be patriotic. Kwabena sent us that from Kumasi. I'll read two more. Mr. Capito, thank you for speaking out loud for us. Consumers, profit margin for Ghanaians are so high. Good morning, Thelma. I want to know, what are the duties of the Consumer Protection Agency? Mr. Capito mm. sits with us quite often and he will make um, that, uh, answer that question a bit later. Thelma, my wife was in Nigeria recently. The price of Coke, 750 ml in Nigeria, was going for two Ghana cities. The same in Ghana is seven cities. Why Ghana traders is a question everyone is asking. I'm guessing that, Mr. Bwati, you have a lot you to know? answer when you read the sentiments on the screen. And I'll give each of you an opportunity to make your final comment. You you so what your is, last word, what is Mr. Interesting Mr. Is, uh, in terms of uh, the manufacturer, we have something called manufacturer suggested retail price. So the manufacturer will tell you that I manufacture, manufacture this. This is the price. Then there's the suggested retail price. So he will then give you as to what margin you can sell it. You've seen it with the coca Colas and the Pepsis. They will do an advert and say, Coke should not be sold more than this. Okay. When they, the, the people, the retailers, they don't even pay for transportation. It is sent to them. Okay, even the ones in the stores, they even give them fridges and everything. But they sell the Coke more than one city. Let's wrap it up, Mr. Capito. Um, let's give final word to... Yeah, all, all that I would say is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if consumers, and uh, for that matter, uh, want, you know, uh, goods to be sold affordable, then government must also uh, reconsider... Uh, the duties and taxes that we are paying at the ports. If duties and taxes goes down, definitely prices will How also... How do we know? Because now fuel pri prices are down, yes. the dollar rate is yes. down, but yes. the prices are still Yes, rising. I told you, I told you, I told benchmark. you fuel, fuel <laughs> is one of the variables. The but there are, there, there, there are, there are a there lot are which, has to do, yes, which has to do with, with taxes. And Mr. if, if government is able to, you know, uh, prune down taxes. Like I wanted to show you, <laughs> If you clear goods at the port, you have about 20 levies and taxes that you pay at the port before your goods come out. Thank so government should prune down those us. taxes and then prices will be affordable for Vice everybody. President of Guta, Mr. Clement Boating and Mr. Kofi Owusuhini, CEO of Consumer Protection Agency, talking prices with GTV Breakfast. We'll take a quick break. When we return, Val sat down with the composers, the composers artists and uh, issue we having that interview with them we're playing it back to you breakfast show live on gtv we'll be back after this break